All right, so this tutorial covers uh, the use of the macro editor in Rhinoceros. Um, uh, a macro is a subroutine that runs uh, a, an explicit set of commands uh, line by line. Uh, and so the way that we can do this, essentially what this is um, akin to is an action in Photoshop uh, or uh, macros are existing in a lot of so softwares, but this enables you to pre-program a set of operations uh, that will run in sequence uh, with preset um, parameters. So um, what we can do is, I actually have one pre-written um, that I've talk, already talked about in class, but I'll go ahead and explain it. So I'm just going to copy this. Um, you can see this from a while back. And we open the macro editor by just typing macro, so macro editor. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to select a, an existing piece of geometry. This could be anything uh, based on this. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be writing through this line by line. Uh, and so every single command in here is an actual command in Rhino. So if we type copy to clipboard, you can see that that command exists in Rhino already. So essentially what this is going to do is this is going to run our command line up at the top. So if we select this object and it's going to copy it to the clipboard, it's going to paste it. So essentially what that's going to do is it's going to duplicate the object. Uh, and it's going to have the, the copy uh, left in place. And then it's going to rotate that object. So we go back in here. And when it, we run the rotate command, it's going to ask us for a center of the rotation. And for that, we're actually going to give it a coordinate, 0, 0, 0. So we're going to give it the origin. And so if you just type in that sequence, you can see that it received that. And now it's going to need, uh, require a reference point. So we can go ahead and, uh, for this particular command, it says angle or first reference point, copy to clipboard, uh, 5 degrees. So uh, if we just, what we've ended up having to do uh, is by running this in the past, I've discovered that uh, for this particular command, you actually have to uh, give it the full command line prompt. Uh, so we'll type 5. And so it's actually going to rotate that geometry 5 degrees about that axis. The very next thing it's going to do is it's going to move and then it's going to um, move from the, the origin point to uh, one coordinate above the origin. And then we're going to have run the twist command. Uh, and if I just type twist, it's going to ask us for a start axis and an end of that axis. And then it's going to ask us for an angle. So we come in here, we can start by uh, start to run the twist command in here. And I'll just zoom out so you guys can see what this is going to do. So if I were to say run at 55 degrees like a program, you can see that this is going to deform that piece of geometry. Uh, and so what we can do with this is we can, once we have that in here, we can run this multiple times. And we can generate patterns out of that. And so what we can start to see is uh, certain pieces of information start to emerge out of that. So our twist axis actually starts to become a three-dimensional vector or a plane that all this uh, content is intersecting. So we can start to really look at this and engage the way the geometry is produced. Um, this becomes a really simple way to produce really complex results. Um, and this uh, starts to get us into a discussion about scripting where we discover that uh, the computer is uh, actually exceptionally stupid at whatever it is that it's doing. And so I just did hit control Z there. And and it will follow this and run this macro subroutine until it actually crashes. So I've copied and pasted that a couple of sequences of times, so it's going to run that same operation a couple of times. Uh, it will run until it runs out of memory. So it does this really, really stupidly. Um, uh, another good dimension to this is that this, is, this has no parameters. There's nothing parametric about this. Um, but this starts to get us into a logic for how the computer understands um, scripting and coding, uh, which eventually will link, link us into how we uh, start to interrogate some of the stuff that Grasshopper is doing. All right, and so from there, what we can do, um, if this was our particular uh, project and we were going to be taking this to the CNC mill, uh, we can do run the make 2D command. Just type make 2D, and what that will do is that's going to flatten our geometry based on the view that we that we have in our perspective here. It makes things really nice when we want to take things to Illustrator or to the CNC mill for this matter.
It's okay. And we, through the magic of uh, um, time lapse, I've gone ahead and um, pulled out all of the extra time that we waited for this. It took about three minutes. Uh, so we can go ahead and then just pull this geometry away. So you can see that that's actually framed this. So we go into our plan view now. We have our captured geometry. And so we can then take this and scale this down or scale this up appropriately to get this size for uh, the CNC mill. All right. So that's uh, essentially all there is to the macro side. And so the, the last thing I want to talk about as we go through this is this becomes uh, an opportunity for you guys to start to look in here. Um, obviously, I've gone through the twist, move, rotate uh, commands in here. But um, really, we can get into some more complex geometry operations. Uh, say we take this in here and um, maelstrom. This is something a student discovered. We can start to really. create complex pieces of geometry very quickly and easily by looking at this, uh, these different methodologies. So we get in here, we can really start to get uh, under the skin of how uh, Rhino looks in, uh, on another level, or how, sorry, how Rhino functions on another level. Okay. And so uh, I would encourage you, if you guys are going to get into this, um, just as a nice introduction, this becomes something that you can start to code uh, different commands and functions, and every function in Rhino will work in this. So you can scale, rotate, shift, uh, whatever you want.